abdominal pain, bloating, diarrhea, acid reflux, eczema, psoriasis, autoimmune conditions, fatigue, joint pain, headaches, are all signs that you could have a dysfunctional digestive system. The good news is all of these can significantly be improved by simply working on your gut health. Approximately 70% of your immune system originates from your digestive system. Not only that, but your digestive system is responsible for producing neurotransmitters like dopamine and serotonin. In fact, 90% of your serotonin is made in your gut. If your digestive system is not healthy and happy, it can lead to many of those symptoms I've just mentioned. No matter how much peppermint oil, antacids, peptobismol, amodium, or any other product you're taking, your digestive system will not get better unless you address what's really causing it. Even if you're regularly taking probiotics, digestive enzymes, hydrochloric acid, or any other digestive support, if you don't know what's causing the problems, you're only guessing. So you're still not going to fix what's causing your problem. In your gut, you have good and bad bacteria. The bad bacteria can produce chemicals that irritate your gut lining and potentially could lead to something like increased intestinal permeability, also known as leaky gut. If you do have an imbalance of the good and bad bacteria, this is known as a dysbiosis. And not only can this lead to inflammation, but it can lead to food sensitivities as well. And that would mean that you're probably gonna become sensitive to foods that you would ordinarily have been okay with. So naturally, we're gonna want less of the bad bacteria and more of the good bacteria within our digestive system. You've probably also heard of gluten. And maybe you or someone that you know might be avoiding gluten for these kind of reasons. Now, gluten is a naturally occurring protein that's often found within certain cereal grains. Most people seemingly tolerate gluten quite well, or at least they don't show the symptoms of any kind of gluten sensitivity. Other people might have some kind of immune response to eating gluten, but still manage to get around just fine. They might experience things like bloating, gas, diarrhea, even headaches or joint pains, but they might not realize that that's down to gluten. And then you have people like the celiacs, and this is an autoimmune condition where if they eat gluten, there is a serious impact within their digestive system and it can cause some serious structural changes. You have these things called microvilli, which are like tiny little fingers. When a celiac eats gluten, they become less finger-like and more flat. So people with celiac disease end up being unable to absorb certain minerals or vitamins so and can end up becoming quite ill with their problem. Other common food reactions can include things like dairy, nuts, eggs, or even nightshade family foods such as peppers, tomatoes, aubergines, and even potatoes. Now, when your digestion is playing up, you might want to try and get to the bottom of what's causing it. So you may want to do things like run an elimination diet or take a food intolerance test, preferably testing for raw and cooked foods, or you could even run a comprehensive stool test looking at things like your gut bacteria. Now the approach that you take will depend on a number of factors, such as what else is happening in your life at the time. What other symptoms are you experiencing? What is available to you? Do you have tests available to you? Or are you on a limited budget, for example? So really this should all be discussed with your practitioner or at least your GP. Now when it comes to gut issues, this might all sound very complex and quite intimidating but I want to reassure you, you don't need to be stressed about this. In fact, if you're stressing about this, that could potentially make your digestive system worse. If you're not sure what to do or where to start, then start from the basics. Start by doing an elimination diet, or at the very least, start with a food and symptoms diary. So recording everything you eat and what symptoms you're getting as a result of eating those foods. But look, if you have multiple issues going on at the moment, you might feel overwhelmed by this seemingly mammoth task that's in front of you. Maybe you've been told by a practitioner you need to focus on something else. Maybe it's your nervous system. Maybe you need to focus on your exercise or your detoxification or sleep or any other system within your body. And what this has probably done is leave you more confused than ever. And you could literally start with any of these systems and you'd probably get somewhere. But generally speaking, if you start with the gut, you can't really go wrong. A good place to start is often doing an elimination diet. Now an elimination diet might be part of a complete plan, such as the 5R gut healing plan, 
which is a process that you could follow that helps to restore the normal gut function. So you start by removing all of the things that potentially could be harming your digestive system. And this would often include removing foods, chemicals, and other things that you might be ingesting that could potentially be irritating your gut. The next thing is you'd replace what might be lacking within your body. This could include things like digestive enzymes, bile salts, or hydrochloric acid, for example. After that, the next phase would be to re-inoculate the gut. And this would be putting back in the good bacteria using things like probiotics and prebiotics. Probiotics are the good bacteria and prebiotics are the food that feed those good bacteria. The next thing is that you'd wanna do is repair the gut lining. And this would include adding in things that will help with that process. For example, glutamine or licorice. And then lastly, you'd want to rebalance yourself. This is more of a lifestyle change. You might want to include practices such as yoga or breathing or mindful eating, things that help to calm your body down and allow your body to heal itself.